So smoking could be banned in pub gardens, outdoor restaurants and outside of sports stadiums. So join us now as the leader of Reform UK, Nigel Farage. Nigel, morning to you. Um, you are a smoker. You are a, a parliamentarian. Is this going to be something you'll be raising in the Commons next week? Absolutely. And also, I'm a pub goer. Uh, yeah. and, and it's interesting that our politicians are a strange bunch, you know. They're not really very sociable, and very few in the House of Commons, I suspect, go into pubs. I love pubs because everyone's a parliament. You know, we discuss local issues, national issues, international issues. Uh, they're really important places. And back in 06, when smoking was banned indoors, uh, pubs and clubs took a 20% financial hit. It's one of the contributors to 7,000 of them closing over the last 20 years. If you ban people smoking in gardens, and ban people smoking outside the front of pubs. That is the end of the British pub. Gone. No more boozers. There'll be restaurants that masquerade as pubs, but there will be no more pubs. And that's because, you know, quite a high proportion of pub goers enjoy the odd smoke as well. So I think it's massive government overreach. Uh, I think it's an intrusion uh, that is just a step way too far. Because if you're outside, there's no reason why your smoke should affect anybody else at all. Um, but I also think there's a danger here. And the danger is this. If you turn through regulation and through tax on the price, a legal activity into effectively an illegal activity, you hand it straight to the criminal gangs. And this has happened in Australia. A packet of cigarettes in Australia is the equivalent of 35 quid. Good Lord. So what has happened? What has happened is the black market in tobacco is now huge. No self-respecting criminal dealer bothers with cocaine anymore. There's no money in cocaine. No, it's cigarettes. It's tobacco. And gang warfare in Melbourne has led to, wait for it, 97 firebombings of shops and houses in the last two years. If you overtax a product, if you make it almost impossible to use legally, you drive it into the hands of the wrong guys. We will not be smoke-free by 2030, uh, Sakir. We will not be drug-free by 2030. We won't be alcoholism-free. We won't be obesity-free. You know, no one's encouraging anyone to smoke, but please, please, government steps too far, it'll have the wrong effect. Nigel, we always suspected that Keir Starmer would come in with a fairly authoritative view of how he was going to run the country, that he knows best, that the collective is always more important than the individual. But have you been surprised by how much he has accelerated uh, all sorts of changes, I'm thinking particularly as well in terms of free speech, in such a short period of time? Mm. Uh, yes and no. I mean, let's not forget, please, that Rishi Sunak uh, was putting forward the most ludicrous law where in a decade's time a 25-year-old could buy a packet of cigarettes and a 24-year-old couldn't. So, so both parties are on this, on this direction. Um, uh, and, and by the way, it'll be alcohol next. The World Health Organization now saying there is no safe limit for alcohol. Uh, but I think the attack, um, and we heard it in Germany yesterday, you know, worried about the snake oil of populism um but the only way to deal with it is delivery well 1100 people over the channel in the last two days is not delivery i think starmer is genuinely scared genuinely scared that the mass of the population are deeply unhappy with legal and illegal legal immigration at these levels and so the attempt to smear everybody who feels that way as being far right to uh, take some people out um, and put them in prison for saying unpleasant things on mm. Facebook or elsewhere. These, to me, are symptoms of fear. He would say, of course, that what he's doing, Nigel, is keeping us all safe, that he wants to save lives and that this smoking ban is only part of that. What would you say to that suggestion? We are not going to be smoke-free by 2030. It isn't going to happen. I mean, you know, I'm old enough to remember decades ago being told there'd be a war on drugs. Well, how successful has that been? Millions of people taking drugs, illegal drugs every week in this country. There is a limit to what government can do. But if you drive a legal activity into the hands of the criminals, you make the situation worse, not better. And I believe that very, very strongly. Uh, and yeah, you know, he, his authoritarian nature is coming through, uh, but it won't have any positive effect on public health whatsoever.
It's only been in the Commons a few weeks, Nigel, but what, what is your sense? Do you think he could get this through the Commons? Because I don't think Sunak would have got his ludicrous idea of stopping 14-year-olds buying fags in 10 years' time through the Commons with Tory support, because <laughs> there were so many Tories were opposed to it. But Labour has a huge majority now. This could, ha this could actually happen. Yes, I think it probably will happen, Andrew, and I suspect most Conservatives will support it. I mean, there is so little difference between these two parties. Uh, you know, the Conservative Party that, uh, that you and I might remember from our youth, uh, that believed in small state and individual liberty, uh, I think is a long time gone. So I suspect this will go through the Commons. Um, I mean, I will probably never go to a pub again. Yeah. Is that I mean, yeah. It, it, I, I, was, I was thinking this morning, if you are a smoker and you like going to the pub, this is literally the kind of thing that would make you want to leave this country and go and live yeah, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, what with that and rising taxes and, and regulation <laughs> and uh, all those things. And here's the worry. I mean, it's a separate point, but, you know, you raise the point, Bev. But the real worry is this. It's not the rich that are leaving Britain. Some are. Mm. It's the 30-something entrepreneurs that are leaving Britain. Yeah, They're seeing they it as a place that is lacking in opportunity. And isn't it ironic that our former partners in the European Union in Italy... I'm going to have to let you go because of time. That's Nigel Farage, leader of report. Before we get into the papers, we just, what's your view of the proposed ban on smoking? Well, tell me, I'm, I thought I'm, we were talking about that next You time. know what? No, we were going to do that next time. But I however, think it's so outrageous. I think, I think it's outrageous. I don't want to live in a society where they're dictating me yeah. what I can do and say. And, and you, know, you know, when you think about it, Obesity is a way oh, bigger yeah. killer now yeah. than smoking. So I'm going to stop people eating cakes in pub yeah. gardens. I was stop, going to stop eating chips in pub gardens yeah. it's I mean, you far, have. Oh, because it's far. Because the doctor wrote the report wants to ban smoking in California. Well, houses. but in, in California they're starting to do that. There's, there's, start, there's a there's a um, an apartment block that wants to ban inside everyone smoking. Now, <laughs> I don't see how someone smoking on the third floor is going to kill you if you're on floor two. I don't. I just don't get it. I do think it... I hate... When, I, when I'm outside a hospital and I see people with one leg who clearly lost it because of smoking, when I see them puffing fags, I think, this is not right. There's yeah. something wrong with this. Yeah. But I think for the beleaguered hospitality industry, just, which yeah. is yeah. only just recovering... Right. But also, I would very much defend that person with, with one limb missing. I would still defend... <laughs> Spend their right to smoke if they I, want look, to. I, this is extraordinary, but I've actually agreed with Carol. Right, oh, oh, um, my, my, my cheers are <laughs> so, um, oh. I actually hate attempts to control what we put in our bodies. It's for that reason that I think that drugs should be legal as well. Uh, I think that smoking, I don't like smoking personally. Yeah. I don't enjoy yeah. it myself, yeah. but I, it's absolutely my right to do it. I yeah. think it's r ridiculous and stupid, this attempt to ban people from buying cigarettes as well. We have this new escalator law that that's seen that, because it's seen that hair-brained idea. And unenforceable. So you're going to have a situation in 30 years' time where sort of 45-year-olds um, are going to have to ask their 46-year-old mates uh, to, to, buy them, to buy them cigarettes because uh, over a certain but threshold. But you won't be able to buy anything without declaring who you are, what you're from. Look, it, look the, the fundamental point is that people have the right to smoke and other people have the right not to not to have yeah, that yeah. smoke forced yeah. on them, yeah. which is why I agree with a, a, a smoking ban indoors. Yeah, in a pub garden, we'll that is where people go to enjoy themselves. Exactly. So it's not going to hurt anybody. Think about it. You know, you say we have the people have the right to smoke, and and I do hate smoking. I, as a, as a yeah. former smoker, I hate it. However, the National Health has to pick up the bill for your smoking. Um, you know, and yes, cancer, lung cancer mortality rates have decreased over the past ten years by sixteen percent, and and over the past thirty years by thirty two percent. However. NHS services are picking up the bill. However, I'm, I'm still like you. I, I think it's wrong where we're no. dictated to but, but about also, what we can uh, do. And just, I'm going to hear smokers shouting at the TV camera saying, yeah, I pay a lot of flipping tax on my and you Yes, and you know what yeah, the thing is? An awful lot. If the government mm. was determined to ban smoking, it could do it in a heartbeat. It could stop fags tomorrow, but it would lose a lot of duty of course, if it stopped. Exactly. And that's why... Well, no, that would be really bad as well, because then it would just become like any other illegal drug. Yeah. And it would just become counterfeit, it would become unregulated, become even more dangerous than it is already. Drug prohibition does not work, it never has worked, and cigarettes going the same way, it's just going to have right. the so same... So what is driving him? As a Labour man, what is driving Sir Keir Star to be taking such extraordinarily invasive measures into people's well, look, private Beth, lives. I'd look, I don't know if this actually is going to be policy. Right now, it's speculation. You know, Starmer has. Well, there's pretty. The Sun has pretty written it pretty hard. They've seen the document. Front page of the Sun. It's what Starmer and some people on the Labour Front mention it all. They do have. I suppose some kind of instincts which are which you might liken to the nanny state, Dictatory and I think that is, and that is actually something 
that he, 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 I suppose you could call it authoritarian, and it's something that is shared by a lot of people in the Conservative Party, because Sunak was exactly the same. Sunak was very much in the nanny state tradition, so I don't think it goes on party political lines. It's not my politics. I'm much more... Uh, I'm much more I, I suppose it's... Yeah. I don't more describe myself as a libertarian in any way, but I certainly would share Sunak, that... Instinct. Sunak would not have got right. that smoking ban through with Tory support. It would only have gone through with Labour support. There were so Absolutely. many Tory MPs yes, who were opposed to it. That, that was but it was, it, was, it was a free vote. It was a free but vote. anything yeah. that smacks of a dictatorship, we, we should fight rail against it at every opportunity. But well, do you think drugs should be legal then, Carol? Absolutely not. Well, then why not? What's the difference? What do you mean, what's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference between shooting up heroin and, and smoking heroin a few fags a day? Heroin's not the only okay. drug. It's about so what you so The difference between taking crack, the difference between taking cocaine on a regular basis, the difference between smoking, you know, t strong weed, which can make you um, schizophrenic, which can give you lots of other problems. But if you know, but That's if you why know, it shouldn't if, be But if you legalized. know about the risks, and if you're educated, the risks, and if they're regulated and taxed oh, and sold an official deal and uh, fit by an official shop, so, that, so OK, so Scotland did exactly what you're talking about. It didn't legalise drugs. Well, do you want to let me finish? So Scotland let people go into centres, pop-up centres, to, to shoot up safely. That's for addicts. So, uh, yeah, and you don't think everyone who takes heroin is an addict, you know? Well, anyway. heroin is a specific uh, drug. But people to take... They allow safe places for people to take drugs. What's happened? Drug deaths have rocketed. It's the highest drug death centre of Europe, and drug taking has rocketed. In the countries where they've legalised it, like Portugal, which has always held up as the great big example of how it works, it does not. There are more people addicted to drugs in Portugal now than there ever were. Less drug deaths, fewer drug deaths, because people can go safe places to do it, but more drug-addicted people. You Young people specifically. What about for cigarettes then? What about for people who are addicted to cigarettes? Is that, I mean, but there, there are always going to be people who are going to be addicted to drugs or who are going to want to take drugs. It's about the criminality issue. It's about sort of whether no, we are going not. to, it's about going the to put people through. Well. Yes, of course, and that's why there should be education about all these things. But well, I just don't agree with putting people who take any kind of drug on, through the criminal justice system. No no but on the criminality thing, on the smoking, how on earth would this being ban be enforced? It well, couldn't it, possibly be. I mean, well, I, are the police going to have to go outside a hospital and what? say, you're arrested? Well, do you know what? I can see the cops under this government doing exactly that, yeah. because they went after an 11-year-old boy yesterday from the Southport yeah. uh, riot, so why wouldn't they do that? Um, you know, we haven't got enough coppers to police that. It and, would just be a ticket. And, and, and yeah, Farage said today, he said, this will be the end of public.